Morning, everybody. David Shapiro here. Everyone has been clamoring for more tutorials, and it took me a while to figure out what to give you a tutorial on, because my most popular tutorials are like the basics, the introductory stuff. Um, obviously, everyone's got to start somewhere, so I figured let's start there. Um, someone asked on a comment, they said, hey, can I get a couple hours of your time? I need your help. I said, no, I don't have time for that. Just tell me what you need. So if you need something, post it in the comments. If it's a good request, I'll just make a video on it and then I'll help everyone. Um, so I, 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 I would help people one on one, but I really don't have the time for it. Okay, so today we are scraping PDFs and Word documents. Um, this is something that I figured out because, well, a lot of data comes in those formats. Um, and I wanted to also give you, um, all you new folks to large language models, a couple of pro tips on where to find data. So kaggle.com slash datasets. This is one of the best places to find datasets. Um, you can also find it on GitHub. If you just, if you have a data set in mind, you could search for like, um, like case law data set. Um, and then you search all of GitHub and you can probably find it. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> so GitHub is a great place to find data. Um, but Kaggle, these are, these are well curated data sets. Um, and you can search by type. There's also Google data. So it's datasetsearch.research.google.com. They often will kind of point at each other. It's kind of funny because this will often point at Kaggle and Kaggle will often point at Google. But anyways, between those three sources, you can find some, uh, some good data. Another one of my favorites is Gutenberg because um, it's all open source. So anyways, let's assume that you've got some PDFs and Word documents that you need to scrape and you want to do it as quickly as possible. So I got you covered. So this repo up here, it's not updated yet. I'll, I'll update it once it's done, but it's really simple, really straightforward. There's two scripts. Now you can do Word documents in Python. However, I found that PowerShell is infinitely better. Um, so first, let me just show you what we got here. I tried PyPandoc, PyPDF, and, um, and, uh, and uh, so PyPandoc, that was for, for, for WordDoc. It does work for WordDoc okay, or for DocX, um, but there's a lot of like artifacts left over and stuff. So it's not the best. Um, PyPDF, I tried that. It wasn't the best for PDFs. PDF Plumber was actually the one that I found was the best for PDFs. So let me walk you through this function real quick. Um, so I wrote this function and feel free to reuse this. It's convert PDF to text. Um, the reason that you want to do this is because uh, large language models can't read PDFs and Word documents. You need to convert it to something that is readable, such as ASCII or Unicode, um, in order to do uh, language operations on it. So um, this function, you give it a direct uh, source directory and a target directory, and it, what it'll do is it'll go through and read every file in that directory that ends in .pdf, and then it will convert it convert it for you. Um, so what you have to do is because PDF stands for Portable Document Format, and so it's basically a digital printout, um, which means it's organized into pages. So what you have to do is you open it, you, so you use PDF Plumber. Oh, and if you're new to Python, this is what you need to do. You do uh, pip install PDF Plumber. If you're not familiar with how to do this, go back to my original tutorials about getting set up. Um, so just this is the only requirement for this one. Um, so PDF Plumber, uh, output for page and PDF pages, and let me go ahead and remove these since we don't use them because they did not work. Um, and I'll go ahead, I'll, I'll leave here actually, um, I'll leave the PyPandoc one here, um, import PyPandoc, um, but I'll comment it out. So you can experiment with this one if you want to, um, but I didn't find, I found that, that Word worked better, but I'll leave it here just in case anyone wants to use it. All right, sorry, I'm being a little bit ADD because I haven't had my coffee yet. But anyways, so what we do here is we have two nested for loops. So for file in files, and you might, so for Python noobs, you might see that I say try and accept. So one of the rules of thumb of Python is it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. So rather than testing the file to make sure that it's healthy and viable, I just say, give it a shot, see what happens. 
because one thing with PDFs is they can be malformed. Like they have um, they have header fi- uh, headers and other aspects. I'm not sure. I don't know what what's actually in a PDF file, but I do know that they blow up sometimes. And so by wrapping this this loop with a try accept, um, so it's going to try the file, and if it blows up, it'll just print out and tell me what went wrong. Um, so I'll get a nice little handy dandy output, um, and it'll it'll say like, hey, this is the error message. Um, and, and we'll go from there. Um, let's see. So yeah, so for page in PDF dot pages, so you see here, so we're opening this whole thing, the PDF file as PDF object. And then so for page in PDF dot pages, cause remember it's a, it's a printable document format or portable document format. So we have to iterate through the pages. It's like you're reading the pages one at a time in a book, right? And so then we say, uh, page dot extract text so we get just get the raw text out of it and accumulate this in a uh, in a string variable called output so we get the text and then we add it and you can add another dmark so I just have slash new line but what you could do you could do um, here let's do it like this we'll do a uh, new page because um, you might need to break it up based on pages so that way you want to you want to retain some of that formatting information um, so you can you can change this change this for your page demarcation. Um, and then once, so once this for loop is done, then it will take that output and say, okay, we'll use the destination directory and then we'll replace .pdf with .text and then we'll save it out um, with the same file name as the source. And so then what you do is you have a folder full of PDFs. I've just got one. I use the uh, the VMware op integrated OpenStack administrations guide. So let me show you what this is. So lots and lots of text and graphics and 200 pages. So imagine that you want to do, um, I, I get requests like this all the time where it's like, I have a KB article or a book or, you know, like this is, this is essentially a textbook, right? For technology people. You're like, I have a book that I want to scrape. This is how you do it. Um, you get the you get a PDF or a Word document version. This is how we go. So that's this. Um, let me just go ahead and run this and show you. It's it it's super fast. So Python convert uh, PDFs, um, and it won't show me any output. So what it's doing right now is it's reading through that big giant document. Um, might take a moment. There we go. So it read the PDF. And then it dumped it here. So now it went from a, uh, let's see, 2.3 uh, megabyte PDF to a 353 kilobyte text document. And there you have it. It is nice and clean. And you see we've got the new page DMARC here. So I know exactly what's on each page. You can add a counter if you want, right? Um, so anyways, all of that text is now all the commands everything, whatever's in that book is now available to be read by a large language model. And you can do other stuff. You can do indexing and, and, um, and whatever. So check out my other videos if you want to know how to search it. Um, okay. So we got the PDF. This function worked just fine, ready to go. Um, so let's move over to Word documents. So the same thing is true. Uh, so the best thing to read a Word document is Microsoft Word. So this works best if you have Microsoft Word installed. So this one was a random uh, data set that I found. I think it was like for emergency shelters. Yeah, okay. So this was av available online as you know NLP training data. I'm not sure why you'd want to use it, but the fact of the matter is a lot of, uh, a lot of data out there is going to be in Word document format. Um, so there we've got that guy, and it's in a folder called docx. And then I have a PowerShell script, so .ps1. So we're branching out of Python. PowerShell and Python are actually very similar um, in, in many respects. Bo they're both interpreted languages. They're both object-oriented. There are a few differences in, in the paradigms of them. Um, and I'm not going to get into a super lot of detail. But I use ISE. So Windows PowerShell ISE is, is called the Integrated Scripting Environment. Um, and so this is what this is what this script looks like. Convert docx. So first, rather than importing stuff, um, there are modules in PowerShell, but we don't need to import anything because it's this comes from the uh, 
from the operating system, right? So new object, com object, word dot application. So the operating system knows how to interpret that. Um, and then I don't remember what word dot visible equals false does. I think this, it means that it opens Microsoft Word headless, which means it's not gonna show me the, 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 the graphic interface. So then like in, the, like in the, uh, the Python script, we have a source directory and a destination directory. So we've got docx and we're gonna put it into converted. So what we do is then we get all the files in that source directory where the file name is like docx because we don't wanna try and do this on any other file types. And then for file in files, we open, we open the docx, we change the name, and then we save as text. So because we have another application that already can do the save as operation, this is basically just opening, opening it and doing save as text version. I found that this works infinitely better by preserving the intent and format of the document. Using the PyPandoc, you lose a lot of stuff and it's not, it's not pretty. So let me just go ahead and show you. So the, the easiest way to run this is you got, just hit start and it, I have it print out which, which one it's doing. Um, okay, so then we'll go to converted and now we have, here you go. You've got it all converted and you see, you see how the, the text, like the, the dashes are all nice and preserved. Um, PyPandoc doesn't always do it this well, um, but this is nice and really clean. Um, and now you can see that the encoding is UTF-8 rather than docx. So now we've got a universal file standard that is easily readable by any machine. And there you have it. This is, this is the tutorial for the day. Um, let me go ahead and just do git status, git add, git commit am, tutorial is done, and git push. So now this is up there for all of you to use um, and, and happy, happy converting files in bulk. Uh, you're welcome. Good night.